on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. You can't reverse it. It's out there now. Um, anyway, if we try to reverse it, it might decide that it doesn't like us anymore and destroy us all. So, you know, it's... Well, uh, it's, it's going to do that anyway, Mark. It's, no, it's only one it place this yeah. ends with the uh, we, robots killing we'll us all, all, but... We'll all be batteries and... Um, yeah. Yeah. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers. No more barriers. No one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Happy birthday, Mark Dawson. Yeah, 400 today. I don't look a day over 399. No, we are, this is episode 400. Can you believe it? We've been going for 400 years. That's what it feels like. Uh, 400 yeah. weeks. Yeah, um, it's quite impressive. Yeah, it is quite impressive. And uh, I think we can probably say that we are on the landscape of indie publishing as a show. I would have thought so. I would say it's so leading because there's some good, good shows out there as well, but we're, we're up there. And I think the people who like listening to their indie publishing podcast, we're definitely on there their list. Um, we've done a lot of interviews. Most of those 400 episodes have had interviews in them. I've yeah. spoken to a lot of people. Anybody who's anybody has been on the show, some people multiple times. We've done some masterclasses, masterclasses, masterclass um, over the years, and we'll do more of them. We've done some out and about shows. We did a couple from London Book Fair, did that twice in a row, actually. Uh, we did an episode from New York. Actually, you weren't there. I've got a, I've got a stand in present with Thomas. Um, I was once. We've had multiple we episodes. Once. Yeah, we did yes. more than once at Thriller Fest. We yeah. did a live episode at Nink, which is one of my favourites to record. More than one. Two, at the least more two, than of one. two of those. Yes, two of those. Last time it was on the main stage. It was really fun. Yeah. Uh, doing that, recording with a live episode, a live, live audience. We'll do that next year. I think we, this year's got away from us a little bit towards um, the back end, so we haven't been able to plan that, but we will do that for next year. And uh, yeah, and I've got a, I've got a quiz for you. Oh, that sounds exciting and a bit it's a, ominous. It's a sort of way of just going back over some of the stuff we've done, um, highlights and stuff. But uh, I want to see if you've been paying attention. So my first question is: How many of the first ten interviewees can you mention? But I'm going to tell you now: three of the episodes, two were from LBF, and one was a masterclass. I've actually only got seven interviewees mm. in the first ten episodes we ever. Broadcast. Uh, I guess Nick Stevenson, Joanna Penn, Bella Andre, Hugh Harry. Um, who else? Bookbub. How am I doing? That's five. You're doing quite badly. Oh, oh dear. Um, I don't know. Okay, probably, so I'm going to go. You, you got a you got a couple there. Uh, I'm going to go in reverse order then. So episode ten was Bella Andre. Episode nine was Ricky Woolman. Ah, uh, yeah. Eight and seven were from LBF. Episode six was Russell Blake. Russell Blake, yeah. Russell Blake, he was a character. Still is a character. If he's still, you know, gun running in South America, whatever he does for a living. Uh, episode five you is... Say, is he still alive? He is still alive. Yeah, I think he is anyway. I'm not life, completely... Lifestyle he lives. Uh, yeah. Episode five was Sean Platt. Yep. One of the boys from self-publishing. What were they called? Show. Self-publishing. Show. Well, we're the no, self-publishing show. show. Podcast. Self-publishing. Podcast, yes. SPP, yeah. Uh, four was a masterclass. Three was Marie Force. Ah, yes. Marie Force. Our yeah. second interviewee was Pat Flynn. Oh, Big name okay. in the kind of world of passive income. And number one was indeed Joe Penn. So I think you've got Joe Penn and Marie Force. But I don't think mm. anyone else. But yes, it was quite surprising actually looking back at that. And Ricky Woolman, very high. So written word media, but bargain books, obviously a big thing back in the day. <laughs> Still, we're now partners with them. Well, they've been a big thing for a, a long time. Yeah, so we, I've, as, I, as I said before, we've known Ricky for ages. So I um, actually met her for the first time this summer with her family, with uh, Feral and her kids, came over to Southwold whilst we were there. And they, they were on a kind of a trip, a holiday to the UK. And they, and they actually, quite amazing. They, they came from London to Southwold on the train, had a couple of hours with us. I took them back to the train station. They went back to London and then went to see Matilda um, in the in in the theatre in the evenings so that was a that was a packed day. But I think 
I think it all worked. But yeah, it was very nice to, to meet them. And um, but that was not the first time you met Ricky. He is the first time I met Ricky. Yeah, and he, we've I, spoken met, lots. Did you not come to Nink one year then? Because I met her in Nink. Maybe you didn't come to Nink one year. Can't remember. Yeah, uh, possibly. I think I missed one, haven't I? Yeah. So yeah, possibly. I mean, first time I met her, Farrell and I met in Vegas last year. Yeah. And it's where we started talking about hooking up with with Hello Books and and Written Word Media. But yes, it was it was the first time I met her. But no, it was it was it was good. Yeah, they've, they've been around for a, they've been around for a while. One of the stalwarts. Hmm. Um, okay, so you did marginally well uh, there, but we had some um, really good early episodes of the uh, the show, and actually everything is there on YouTube. It's on our website as well. You can go when back. you say really good, what you mean really is really bad because um, you remember in the early days we decided it'd be great if we all if if I was involved in the interviews as well. So you have lots of instances of. Paul Marie Force, for example, struggling to um, be interviewed by both of us, which we very quickly realised wasn't going to be sustainable. It made much more sense for you to do, do the interviews, given also that that's one of the things you're good at. And I just... I, I don't know how... I honestly don't know how good, I, how good I was in those early days. I listen... I, I hesitate to listen back to those early interviews when I didn't know what I was talking about from the start, which I, yeah. you know, come, come, comes from a journalist background where that doesn't matter. Because every day you, you're given subjects you don't know what you know you're talking about, but um, I know a lot more now, and I think my interviews are better now than they were then, which is the right way about it. Uh, who yeah. else do we have in those early episodes? So you can look back. We had Barbara Freethy, another um, you know, huge name in indie publishing. I've spoken to Barbara actually for a while. Perhaps could catch up with her. There's Mads. She can never hear me, but now I've met Mads. She's waving. Hey! <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, Mads has just delivered uh, Mark's coffee. One of um, Mark's member, members of staff, <laughs> Uncle Nagpal, we've had on. He was a, a, a sort of serial entrepreneur. He started Teachable platform. We still use. I don't know what he's onto now. He's onto something else. I, I do. do. His he's name doing, pops up. Uh, it? It's got a company called o- Ocho. I think it's called. They do uh, financial advice for entrepreneurs. So it's kind of uh, online okay. learning for American based. So things like four hundred one ks. I think that's the thing. Um, yes, we don't have those, but. Yeah, people talk about those all the time. Um, but yeah, that's what he does now. Completely irrelevant to what, what we do, but yeah, he's a, re- he's a good, good guy. The reason I know what a 401k is, Shane Silvers told me once that he emptied his 401k without telling his wife to buy our course. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, he's so filled it up a, again since. He has filled it up again since. It was a throw of the dice. But uh, I should, We should probably add, our, that sounds like our course costs about $100,000. Yeah, no, he only had $400 in there or something at the time. Right, but, uh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Um, okay, let's us. Well, the next thing I've got is we did a very early masterclass which caught my eye called Must Do Actions for New Authors. And we had five must do actions for new authors. Can you, Mark Dawson, name those five? Oh, def- definitely not. Uh, well, write a book would be the obvious one. Um. <laughs> I, think, I think we can assume that they're an author and therefore there's a book either written or in progress. That's not one of the must-do actions. Okay. With, and it's more marketing, I suppose. Right, so it'd be things like set up a mailing list that's got to be on there. Yes, that is um, number one. I imagine uh, build a website. Yes, that's number two. You're doing well, much better than you were the interviewees. Um, what else would I say? Possibly start writing the second book. Would that be one? That's no. not in this list, no. It's- uh, work, what, advertising, maybe? Work about... Um, but it's a step before advertising. Number three is social oh, media. Well, yeah, okay, set up a social, so, social media uh, platforms. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so we went through that with Facebook profile being uh, and page being um, one of those. Well, that's changed. Ones. I mean, it's that, the the detail has changed now. The, yes. the advice would be the same, but it might well now be you know build build a TikTok presence or yes, and a group probably yeah. for your followers. Yeah. Um, and the last two, I don't know if you'll, you'll be able to second guess these, but they will make sense when I tell you. So number four was treat it like a business. Mm. Um, so uh, this is somebody else's notes on our podcast. Actually, they, they helpfully summarized it, but you talked about being a sole trader and realizing that wasn't very efficient and you set up a company and got your copyright sorted out. Uh, and basically, um, you know, as I said, treat it like a business because that's what it is, it's not, not a side thing. And number five was be professional. Employ proofreaders, editors, cover designers, book formatters, illustrators. And I think you said in the episode something you've repeated since, which is your book should look indistinguishable from mm-hmm. Arthur Collins uh, on the bookshelf. So those were yeah. the five 
must do actions for new authors. I think they still stand. Yeah, um, they like, still stand, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so the data, there the details changed. There wouldn't be anything I'd, I'd say, no, no, none of those five are no longer relevant. And I, they're probably still about as important as they were whenever I waffled on about those 400 episodes ago. So yeah, I, I think that would that would still be quite good advice. Well done me. Yeah. Well done you. And the, um, yeah, the website is an important one because it's your bit of real estate. I think it's the point we made at the time. Okay, so I've got another one here. I'm going to make sure I don't cover up the screen. I'm going to keep it over here. Uh, we did an episode um, very early on. Well, 135, this was number 100, called uh, the Indie Author Toolkit. This is the Indie Author Toolkit. That was the must-do action. So the Indie Author Toolkit, where we listed the top 10 tools that indie authors should have. And there's some honorable mentions outside the top 10 I'll come to afterwards. But how many of these can you get? So 10 tools that we recommended to authors 265 episodes, 365, no, 265 episodes ago. Before I do that, it reminds me, I've, have you heard of the band Tool? You probably haven't. No. Not your cup of tea. They're, they're quite a well-known band in, in you know, of people in who certain like circles. I, I like. Um, so Tool, yes, James Maynard Keane, uh, really good singer, been in a perfect circle as well. Anyway, I bought a T-shirt the other day and it just has Tool on it. And um, my kids think that's hilarious because yes. uh, Daddy's wearing his Tool, his tool T-shirt again. Of course, I, I I wear it. I understand the joke. You know, the it's irony. fine. Yes. And I absolutely fine. You anyway, worry, um, your eyes open. James Maynard Keynes. Keen. Keen. Oh, okay. Not John yes. Maynard Keynes. Okay. No, not. He's not an economist. He is. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a really good singer. Anyway, so tools. So I would say. Um, now I have to go up and down this list as you're talking. Well, I would say probably Scrivener. Uh, Scrivener is number one in the okay. list. Congratulations. Word. Good start. Stand by. I've got to go back. Word is number four in the list. You've got two so far. Um, vellum might not have been out when we did this, but Vellum would certainly be in the list. Are you going to go for Vellum or not? You've got to make oh, a decision. Oh, that's exciting. Yes, I will. Number three. Vellum is number five in the list. That's your okay, third that's, successful that's one. You're on a roll, Dawson. Doing mm. well. Uh, Facebook? Facebook, of course, is there. It's number six on the list. Oh, he's still the time with it. WordPress. So WordPress. WordPress. Mm, that doesn't bring a bell with me. No, WordPress is your first fail. Excel. Oh, and it's all going wrong for you now. I oh, don't dear. think Excel's there. I do, Excel should be in the top 10, actually. Um, that's an absolutely yeah. Yeah, vital tool that I use every day with my publishing. But it's not. it was not in our top 10. I'd say something to do with accounts and, and record keeping. I don't know. I would probably add this in now, but... Uh, we, we I, think, use I think you're zero. missing some. Yeah, that's not that. You're, you're missing some quite big ones we'd recommend to authors. Some quite big ones that we'd recommend to authors. Um, well, I think that Amazon, that's too obvious. No, that's too obvious. But uh, if you wanted to give away a book, for instance, something we recommend mm. early on. Okay, yeah, Book Funnel. Yes, book okay, Funnel, there enough. we go. Yeah. Squeeze it out of you. That was number three in the list. Um, and. And number two in the list. Oh, Mail, MailChimp or, yeah, so or EMS. Doesn't have to be yes, MailChimp. I mean. Or ESPs, email service providers, e, e, whatever you want to call them. And we talked about specifically MailChimp, MailChimp, and Can, and ConvertKit has got three options at different price levels there. But that uh, is number two. So let's see what you've lost. Uh, you mentioned Vellum. You have not mentioned Canva. Uh, I, I do not use Canva. I'm a Photoshop person, but I know lots and lots of people mm. use Canva. And Canva has adapted itself. It's not... It's not really aimed at authors, but has has a flexibility there. I actually find Book Brush um, does a very good job with some of those. Things. Yeah, yeah. Um, we probably would put Book Brush in there now. I think. Yeah, uh, I'd say we'd be in there somewhere. Yeah. Eight is Book Report, a tool I don't use. Uh, but now Book Report tends it's still around, but I don't use it anymore either. So um, it's um, it pulls the Amazon data back and enables you to cut and slice and dice your um, reports to show various things from sales and orders and kit and page reads and all that. Amazon has kind of pulled the rug from under it a little bit by doing a lot of the things that it did. Um, so I, I don't use that anymore. Um, there are other services that do what Book Report did and, and still does. I mean, things like Scribe Count, as uh, Rand, Randall's a friend of the show. So he's um, Randall Wood in the States. We'll probably see next month, um, but yeah, he, he's um, he's bought something in, and 
what's John Logston's uh, author helper, is it called? Yes, the author so helper. I I see, it's similar. There are suites of products now that enable you to do things like that. And also, and, and some that, that work with um, Amazon advertising and Facebook ads, enabling you to kind of identify the effectiveness of your ads and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, okay, that, that's, that would be a good one. Facebook yeah. ads library, I'd put in there. I probably didn't put it in there before, but I'd certainly have that in there now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the author el- the author helper is, is John Logson's suite yeah. of tools. Um, well, there are two left that you haven't mentioned, and they are number nine, KDP Rocket, which is now known as Publisher, Publisher Rocket. Rocket. Yeah. Um, but is something uh, very, very useful indeed, particularly as category changes have happened recently. Um on Amazon, you probably know uh, that that is the case. And uh, oh, have Dave, they? Yeah, Dave Chesson's, um he's the man. He is the man on planet Earth outside of Amazon who can talk with authority about those categories and metadata and stuff. And it's nerds, nerds alert, but it's great. Um, it's a very, very useful tool to have, one I definitely do use. And number 10 was Pro Writing Aid, actually, uh, in this list. So, um, that's an interesting one. I mean, pro writing, I, I remember in the interview we did about PWA, and I can't remember what episode that was, but you can search for it on the website. This was probably three years ago, and he was talking about machine learning from the way authors write um, to help with the writing process. And of course, that is now uh, with AI accelerated forward um, and is controversial as well. We will talk about AI, I think, a little bit on this episode before we go. It is the hot topic at the moment. And there were some honourable mentions. There are quite a lot of them, actually. I'll just go through them. Would we still recommend them? K-Lytics. And on the episode, yes, you, you, said, yeah. you said K-Lytics, and I didn't know what K-Lytics was. But I do know now know what K-Lytics wants. Another nerd alert, uh, but genius uh, Alex Newton, or Nyhaus, I think is his name. Uh, Alex is, does an absolutely fantastic job in analysing Amazon and finding the gold. So you can find... Popular genres that are well read but underserved by writing, and you can equally find uh, the genres that are overserved by writing and going to be very competitive to get into. Uh, that's the sort of thing you get from him. You get really good deep analysis on your genre. Um, thoroughly recommend Kalis. It's k-lytics.com. Uh, Story Shop. Oh no, not not so much. That's um, that's the the SPP self publishing podcast yeah. guys had a. Had yeah. a- I, I think social, which anymore. doesn't work anymore. Twitter, we probably wouldn't. I mean, I get there's a guy direct messages me all the time saying you can sell your books on Twitter. I'm selling 500 when I do this, that, and the other on Twitter. I'm just unconvinced about it and have no, got bandwidth at the moment to look not, into it. But not it's for not selling. A- it's it's good for if you're in nonfiction or if you just want to make connections with authors. It's still pretty good for that. Um, you have to swallow your ethics perhaps a little bit there's some things it's it's a pretty um, can be a fairly unpleasant platform it's still i still use it a lot but it's it has its challenges um but not i don't think for selling i don't think it's ever really worked for that x we should say what x, it's called now. yeah yeah um evernote i've never used evernote yeah i don't use it anymore but it's it's, it's and there are other options now but that's uh, kind of a fairly sophisticated note-taking um piece of Apple piece of software that you can use across devices. But yeah, I don't use that anymore. I use notes. With Evernote. Yeah. Um, Calibre, which I... Cal- Calibre is useful. Yeah, if, if if you... I mean, there are ways around that now, but if you wanted to um, take an EPUB and amend it, you can use Calibre to convert it into a Word file. So it's... it's Obviously, it has kind of nefarious applications as well but it's it was one of those tools it's really it's not the tool's fault people use it to to do things like that but it is useful if you wanted say say you lost a file you didn't have it and but you were still you were still on amazon you could down the download the epub put it into caliber and then convert it into a word file so you know you wouldn't, can you, you wouldn't download the epub on amazon you, you can download the html you can, you can yeah Okay. If you want me to show you how to do it later, you tell me. I'll, um... Yes, I do, actually. And um, this is not for nefarious purposes, but we don't always get all the manuscripts with Fuse Books, and I do like to have the manuscripts there. So I'm going yeah. to give um, Tina probably the job of, of preparing the manuscripts. So she you, might. You can, yeah. It. You can pull She might back. know yeah. how to do it already, but uh... yeah. Okay. Uh, Instagram, definitely would still recommend Instagram, both for advertising and for social presence, particularly romance seems to do very well on 
Instagram, Google Docs. I'm not a huge fan of Google Docs, but it's a useful tool um, for passing information. Well, I mean, so it's, it's well, Google Docs. If you were writing something, in, say you, you didn't. Well, say you wanted to write something on various devices or you, on your phone, if you're on the bus, you save it as a Google Doc. I mean, obviously, iCloud does the same thing, but you yeah, can... Yeah, I mean, I use or Dropbox. Or Dropbox. That, yeah. But yeah, Dropbox Google is the Docs. next one on the list, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, um, again, Dropbox is still, still useful for me with Scrivener. You can auto-back up into, into Dropbox, and that has saved my bacon twice in the last 12 months. Oof. So made a bit of a boo-boo not too long ago. I had two... Had a, had a Scrivener file open on this computer here and went traveling and took my my lightweight MacBook, um, my, my Mac Air, took it on the plane, opened up without realizing and, and got a document conflict. Mm. And I thought, I thought I'd thought i lost the work I'd done whilst traveling, mm -hmm. but it had saved it into Dropbox and I was able to pick it out. So that was, yeah, that's useful. And I, I think actually having multiple redundancies is a good idea for that. So crash plan is a good thing to have one yes. in the background as well. Yeah. Yeah, I have that as well. So Dropbox I use. And yeah, you do have to remember to close Scrivener down. I had this yesterday, actually. But luckily, my laptop was in the house and I was sitting here, so it wasn't a big deal. But had I got, been on the train to London, mm. it would have been a pain, as you say. Um, Microsoft Excel is also on that. Um, also mentions, I think we'd probably expand this list to 20 now and put quite a few of these in as, as everyday tools. Uh, Dragon Dictate, uh, we put in as an honorable mention. Um, yeah, you probably using not, No, not now. I mean, um, the Mac is pretty good. So we, I, we, I think we both have kind of um, Apple Silicon Macs and the latest version has, it used to be you could get 30 seconds worth of um, online transcription so you could transcribe and it was quite good but it would shut down after 30 seconds and you had to be online to to do that the the new macs have offline transcription and for as long as you want so i do often i don't dictate kind of paragraphs after paragraphs but if i'm kind of doing a couple of sentences i will sometimes dictate them um and it's getting quite good now at, um can you do that in in scrivener would you have to be a yes. word to do you no you can yeah anything so i mean basically on the Mac, probably you'll find if you hit function three times, that will switch on your um, transcription. You Sounds can change like it, obviously, to, to whatever, you know, whatever you want the trigger to be two times or something else. And then you can start transcribing. It's pretty good. And and obviously, the you can do it on phone as well. I mean, iOS transcription is pretty good now. Mm. Um, so I often transcribe emails because it's just a pain. The little keyboard sometimes and my yes. sweaty fingers. It's kind of like, ah, yeah. that's annoying. So I just dictate it. If we hit function then, three course, times after the show, don't say Beetlejuice three times. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, yeah, that works. That works pretty well. And I'm seeing that is getting better and better. So not surprising, really, given that things like Siri is, it must be drawing on what it is drawing on, on the language model that Siri uses. Of course. Yes, indeed. Uh, we put down Grammarly, similar to Priority Aid, but uh, not as dedicated, I think, to authors. Photoshop. Uh, put down, I use Photoshop every day. Novel Factory, writing software. I think that was one that I was using at the time. Mm -hmm. Helped me in my early days, found it very useful. And that was it. They were the the honorable mentions <clears throat> in that list of toolkits. I think what we might add to that, I mean, I would add Mid Journey to it, which is an AI image generation tool for advertising images. Um, I mean, I will say right at the beginning, I don't intend to do my own covers using AI. I think some people might do. I won't. Uh, I'll be using Stuart for that. I think it's a skill set to do with composition and blending and fonts that is beyond me. But absolutely, for things like A-plus content, um, if you go and have a look at my my page, James Blatch books on Amazon, you should see my A-plus content. I've used AI to generate those images and for Facebook. So I would, I would put that in there. Um, very useful in conjunction with beta version of Photoshop, which has a bit of generative fill in there as well to enable you to resize and move the compositions about. Um, and chat GPT, I think is becoming a, a tool again, not for writing Mark as such, but for doing a lot of the ancillary work that we end up doing as authors and making life more efficient. It's not for writing for me or for you, but it is others. People are using it to write now and, and um, that you can use it to, well, we, we won't. We, we'll have a chat at some point about the kind of ethics and legality of AI because it's an in interesting subject. But some people are using it to kind of generate chapters or, or books and then kind of 
I mean, a lot of people are using it and then just posting it as is, which is a terrible idea. Yeah. Other people are um, using it as a kind of a as a foundation and then working on on that and editing, which I think is probably not a great idea either. But you know, whatever, so whatever they want to do is is fine. Um, other people will use it for you know research or paragraphs or sentences. Um, I, I use it for things like um, blurbs. It's very good for blurbs. Um, only a, as a starting point, you just do a lot of work on it, but it will do a pretty decent first draft. Um, it's good for marketing, so taglines, uh, headlines, ad copy. Again, as, as not usually without any kind of input, you do need to kind of massage it quite a bit, but it's very good for generating ideas. Even things like book titles, if, if, if you tell, tell it what the story is about, it will come out with, you know, after 20 titles, 19 of them will probably be awful. But one of them might be something you you could work with. Um, so a, as a prompter, you know, you prompt it, it prompts you. I, I think it is quite, well, it's extremely useful. Um, and obviously as, you know, as, as the as the models are iterated and we get to version five, which will be out quite soon, um, it's getting more proficient all the time. And, you know, at some point we are going to have a, some interesting problems when it starts to be good enough and it's not, it's not there yet. And I don't think it's, it's even close yet, but when it will be at some point good enough to start writing more than passable text. Uh, and, and that's when we'll have a, an interesting discussion about what, what might come next. Um, yeah. but you know, I mean, it, it sort of makes me laugh a little bit. A lot of hand wringing about this in the community, and some people very militant about it and saying, "Well, we're not absolutely. You're an awful person for touching AI, and I want nothing to do with you. I'm leaving the group and and everything." And fast forward a couple of years, there will be major online retailers for readers, where readers can go in, specify what sort of book they want, roughly what the plot is, level of language and violence and sex and so on, and press a button, and AI will produce their book for them. And that will be happening, whether we like it or not. So, you know, you've got two choices here. You can put your head in the sand um, like the Luddites did and pretend that the machines aren't there or if you get an opportunity to go in with an axe and smash one up. Or you can use the tools available as ethically as you want, so that you're comfortable with, to improve your work as an author. Um, and again, it's not for me to use it for writing. I don't want to do that. A lot of people won't want to do that. And I think there will always be a market for human writing, of course. Um, but to put your head in the sand and say, I'm not touching anything to do with AI, I don't think is the right stance to take at the moment. No, I me mean neither. It is, it, is a, it is a very interesting and complicated debate with a lot of, you know, I kind of, I'm somewhere in the middle of it. So I'm not as pro as some people I know are and, you know, kind of extolling it and this is the future. And I'm certainly not as, you know, I'm not smashing the looms up. Mm. on the other side of the spectrum, but somewhere in the middle. I think that's, and you know, it's kind of, I think pragmatism is sensible because it's, it, it, there isn't really any option. It's not going to stop. It's, even if, you know, governments at some point will probably have to legislate to um, update copyright law because it's, it's woefully inadequate right now. Um, but even if they did that, I, I still can't see, well, I just, you can't be, you can't reverse it. It's out there now. Um, anyway, if we try to reverse it, it might decide that it doesn't like us anymore and destroy us all. So, you know, it's... Well, uh, it's, it's going to do that anyway, Mark. It's no, there's only one is, place this yeah. ends with the uh, we'll robots killing we'll us all, all, but... We'll all be batteries and... Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll 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 um, we'll um continue to get into that. And, and um, when does this episode go out, James? Is it going out? It goes out a week today. A week today. So we will be having um, a webinar as we as we launch... Ads for Authors launches in early September. Um, and what is it, 13th of September? Uh, 13th of September, yeah. Wednesday, 13th of September. So we think we're going to have a webinar on the 30th of September, which I think will be, we better get a, we better get a little landing page up for this. But um, yes, yeah, we will. I think it's going to be quite popular because we're going to talk about, I think, the way we're using AI in our advertising and our marketing. So James has... Um, Done, I mean, it is kind of underselling how good he's got on Mid Journey. So, some of the things he's doing with Mid Journey now are really impressive. Um, and it is, you know, if, if you wanted to, let's just say you wanted to run some Facebook ads and you wanted to run a, a dynamic creative testing. So, you, you want, say, four images. You can generate those images within about half an hour. Um, whereas, otherwise, you know, unless you had kind of Photoshop skills, it, was, it would involve 
a much longer process to get those images. It's a real pain point for, for testing. Um, so we'll, we'll look at generating images using Midjourney. We'll look at using Photoshop to kind of uh, manipulate those images so they're ready to be used on Facebook. And I'll probably talk about using uh, uh, generative AI to uh, look at things like tag tags and copy and maybe even some... I mean, Facebook, sorry, Facebook, uh, ChatGPT is pretty good at recommending targeting options, um, headlines, primary text, all of that kind of stuff that is, you could easily spend a couple of hours working on that. It gives you, and it's not ready to go generally all the time, but it'll give you a really good place to start. So what we will look at is using those tools to put together the foundation to to build ads that are working. And, you know, we, we've been using the images um, in and SPF ads for a couple of weeks, maybe a month now. And, and we found that the cost of those ads or the acquiring new subscribers has gone down. Yeah, and the only thing that's changed is the images. So that's probably the reason. So, you know, that's going to be good. So what, what are we going to, what's our landing yeah, page think, going to be for this? I think we're going to call it selfpublishingformula.com forward slash AI marketing. Okay, AI marketing, yeah, that works. And and the uh, so the, I suspect the webinar will be at nine o'clock on UK time, uh, Wednesday the thirtieth of September. But that yeah, will all so be on the landing page. But and I would also, I would sign up if if you hear this, this is the first time we mentioned this. Um, I I never know for sure, um, but I think this is one that will fill because it's very, it's a very interesting subject and 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 quite valuable. So I I think it might be one that we we kind of bump up against our top limit on the software that we use. So do get in and, and reserve your seat. Yeah, definitely. Self-publishingformula.com forward slash AI marketing to register. And um, doesn't guarantee you a place, but it gives you a link to join us on the night. Uh, if we get to a thousand on the night, that does lock people out, but we'll do a replay, of course, the next day. But if you want to be there live for that, jump onto that quickly. This will be a, it'll be a week, week today. So 25 plus seven. 32 it'll be the 32nd of um of september uh, of august i don't know what you're talking about now no. uh, i was going to say what date it is today this is going out but i you know it's the 2nd of september i guess something like that i can't well, read my calendar because it's going to cover up the day today is the 25th of august so this is yes. going to go on the 31st so it will oh, 31st. be oh, my mass is terrible Yes, it is. Well, thirty second of October. That was uh, interesting. So, be, as this goes out, it'll be about ten days. So, be yes. Of course, so, it's not I'll, plus seven, is it? Because it is Friday, so it's plus six more days. That's why it's a. I still, I still don't know not, what you're talking about. Not the thirty second of, of August. No. Okay. Um, now, in, in the future, we are thinking on the podcast we might do more episodes where Mark and I choose specific subjects to drill down into stuff that we're doing at the moment with our marketing. Um, and we're looking into, you know, direct selling is huge at the moment. Um, so we may have fewer interviewees on in the future. Um, and we know that people quite enjoy, we call it the banter, but we try, try and do make it as useful and as productive as possible. Um, so that might be a slight change in tone from episode 400 onwards. And I'm also in the process, finally, of getting the um, opening voiceover redone. So it's, uh, we'll say goodbye to Huey from... Fun loving criminals, and we'll get a new voice where I'm no longer a first time author. Well, yes, I'm sad about that. I think we, we need to we need to get Huey back. But, um, yeah, he's he's part of the brand now. He's been with us for about 300 episodes. Maybe we can. I'll have a look. If it's easier, we had to go and meet him, which was great. It was fun to go into a recording studio. We with can him. send Young Tom. Young Tom <laughs> can do that's it. That's true. We can send Young Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. See how much he costs as well. He was a nice yeah. guy though. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay, I think that's about it. You got anything else? Um, no, apart, but there may be probably not, perhaps not for this episode, but we are going to have some changes to the podcast, um, in, as we kind of get past episode 400, um, some change, we've got something quite exciting, in fact, extremely exciting that we've been working on for about six months that we can't talk about yet, but it's coming quite soon. That might mean one of the podcasts in the month is a little different. Um, and we tried to give James a bit of a, a rest from interviewing hundreds of people um so maybe slightly fewer interviews i might do a little bit more myself so perhaps a monologue episode or kind of me just rambling on about stuff that i think is interesting maybe once a week but we'll, we'll, we're still kind of formulating that and we'll we'll talk yeah. about that perhaps maybe next week see where we get get to sure there's an echo in here mm. echo anyway echo echo okay okay right right yes indeed we'll do all of that well look thank you very much indeed if you've been with us from the beginning wow 
I mean, there, there are people listening, Mark, who've been here since episode one, that JPEG episode, which I'm is sorry, amazing. I'm sorry to those people. I mean, it's, I, I, uh, I can only apologise. We thank them, and uh, it's always fun. Come and say hello to us. We're getting up to um, travelling season for us. September and November will be in Florida and then Vegas. And I do have that thing. You probably get it as well. I think you're more recognisable than I am, but people recognise my voice. So I'll be mm-hmm. in an elevator, as they call them in America, chatting to someone, and someone will just turn around in front of me saying, I know who you are because they recognize yeah. my voice. And um, uh, that's always a delight, always fun. So do come up and say hello to us. Uh, they will give you more details about our sort of drinks. You told me you hated it. Yeah, I do you, not you hate said, it. I you said it. you hated it. You said, I, f- I know, I'm not joking. He is, make, he is joking. English humor. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I don't like it when I get physically assaulted, touched. Well, um, no. I'm, I'm a repressed male. English, exactly. Middle class. English, exactly. Um, Okay, look, that's it. All that remains for me to say is is a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.